Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, the sell side has been more active and dominant, and we've seen a move back down into yesterday's initial support, where so far, responsive buyers have been active. And now heading into the open, our intermediate term bias will continue to be neutral bullish, and our short term bias will continue to be neutral. And early in the session, how the market behaves at the 4186 half to 94 half initial support is going to help us determine the intraday bias. As long as buyers can hold ES at or above initial support, technically there would still be the potential for the market to continue balancing within the recent range. But in order for us to get even the first hint of a confirmation that buyers are stepping in, we would need to see a break above the aggressive resistance at 41.97 quarter to 42.01.75. If the market continues to struggle and hold below the aggressive area of resistance, then that in itself would be a sign of intraday weakness and continuing to balance below the aggressive resistance zone can eventually result in a breakdown attempt below initial support. So one of the key differences between yesterday and today is that yesterday buyers were dominant in the overnight session and today the sell side has been more dominant in the overnight session. And now off the open, how ES behaves at the initial support and the aggressive resistance is going to provide us with an early indication as to which side is in control. If buyers can hold ES above initial support, then we want to see a break above the aggressive resistance. Above that, we have the pre-market resistance zone at 42.05 to 13. That is technically a spot where sellers can still be active on first test, although it's not a major area of resistance, but holding below it or seeing a strong rejection at pre-market resistance followed by a break below the aggressive resistance zone would be another sign of intraday weakness. So when it comes to support and resistance areas, we don't just use them as entries and targets, but they also help us determine the state of the market and the level of strength and weakness in the market. So how ES behaves at pre-market resistance will also be very telling. If we are seeing sustained upside momentum and the market takes out pre-market resistance, then that would be a sign of stability and that can lead to a move up into the initial resistance zone at 42.21 to 29. Now that is a larger time frame area of resistance, so technically sellers can still defend there on first test and we would need to see signs of initiative buying in order to get a sustainable breakout above initial resistance and especially above 42.36 half to 44 half. Now, on the downside, a break and hold below initial support would be an intraday bearish indication. And in order for us to get a sustainable breakdown below initial support, we will need to see signs of initiative selling in real time. So we'll need to see a break below initial support on broad market weakness and some decent and sustained downside momentum. And that would be an intraday bearish indication, which can result in downside range expansion into 4164 half to 74 half as well as 4161 quarter where buyers may still be active but if the market is selling off on excess weakness and some big and sustained downside momentum then those areas would be at risk of being taken out and the market could end up hitting lower into 4143 half to 53 where responsive buyers may still be active on first test and the lower the market pushes, the better the support it will run into, the more exhausted the range will get, and higher the odds that responsive buyers will step in. So that is the market context and plan heading into the open. Let's see how the real-time situation shapes up and how the market behaves at the initial support zone. That's going to help set the bias and tone early off the open, and we'll take it from there.